Happy New Year's and welcome back to the channel for a fresh start to 2023. Today's video, we need to do a massive predictions forecast video for 2023. I'm going to be covering Bitcoin, the NASDAQ, S&P 500, Dow Jones. We're going to look at some finance sectors as well to help us into this second half of the real estate cycle. Of course, I'll be covering the real estate cycle as well. The US dollar, gas, and other major commodities based on some of the macroeconomics that we've been hearing throughout 2022 with how bad things were in 2022 and how bad they should be getting into 2023. Of course, if you've been following this channel for any particular time by hitting the subscribe button and the like button down below, of course, it helps out the channel and you get to see more of this content on your newsfeed. I'll remind you again at the end of the video if you want to see what sort of value there is in this video before clicking the buttons. Uh, if you have been following, you know the position of myself here on the channel and our members in the Investor Accelerator is that we are looking towards 2023 as being part of that bottoming process and then looking up towards the end of 2023. And I want to show you why that is the case in today's video. I know this is not going to be what many people are wanting, but I hope that it helps some people see potentially a different side to what's going on out there. Maybe it's going to help some people out just like what would have helped people out at the tops, seeing things that they didn't want to hear or see at that particular point in time. Now, of course, I'm going to cover this in a lot of charts. The main thing I do here is technical analysis, looking at what the news is going to tell us later, but it tells us first here on the chart. So we've got a lot of charts to get through, looking at, as I said, Bitcoin first, and then getting into some of those uh, stock markets as well to give us an idea of what to expect next. A lot of these things are going to be similar, but also slightly different timings or potential to the upside. And I focus uh, heavily on the tech sector and the S&P being the two differences there. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So first thing I want to start with is the Bitcoin chart. And the white line is Bitcoin. The yellow line is the S&P. And over the last two or three years, 2020, 2021, 2022, there's been quite a lot of similarities here with the charts. I don't expect that to change anytime soon. And I don't expect it to change probably in our lifetimes. We'll wait and see for that. But the main big thing here is when the markets are depressed, everything will go down with it. And cash is going to be your friend. We learned that lesson again in uh, 2022. When markets are happy, people are joyful and they think everything's going to go to the moon, pretty much everything goes at the same time. But you're going to have slightly different topping out periods and slightly different bottoming periods. But essentially, it happens around that same time. And the overarching cycle here that we focus on is, of course, the 18.6 year cycle with credits to property share market economics that have developed this. This has worked for over 200 years. You may have seen it begin to circulate online. It's starting to gain some popularity. People are seeing the cycle here, which is a great thing. But this has over 200 years of history. And even further back, if you look at the UK markets, nearly 300 years of history within this one particular cycle. So before we jump too far ahead to too many different charts, the first thing here is Bitcoin. And I want to start with Bitcoin, looking at what we've covered uh, previously in terms of our monthly forecasts or what some people like to call predictions. And we'll use that for January from now into February. And then, of course, quarter one, quarter two and so on. And then look forward 12 months from this particular time as well in the market. So the first chart I've got here is January to January. And then I want to focus a little bit on the major tests because we're going to have to break down the 12 months into major sectors. This is not going to be an easy ride from the low to the high. And it's going to confuse a lot of people, myself included. Everyone's going to get confused at some point along the way. So as long as we have a bit of a roadmap ahead of us to help us keep track of what's going on, guide us through our analysis as the market begins to deliver more and more data throughout the year. Hopefully that keeps us safe in the market as well. So the pink vertical lines here are January periods. And we just want to have a look at what has happened in the past from January to January on Bitcoin. And if we see any sort of patterns here as well, we did this with uh, the November 
predictions video. And we saw from November to November, if you go November in the bear market, 12 months later, every single time of the last uh, two times of the bear markets, it has been a positive result. So you could buy in November and then look forward to the following 12 months in November and you'd have a positive result. That's shown here on the markets. This is similar to what we want to do this time around for uh, January. So let's start back and then have a look at how this works in with different times in the cycle. Of course, this also includes things like recessions and anything else that the media tries to throw our way. The main thing here is that we're focusing on charts and not getting caught up with what is new out in the macroeconomics like the money print has been turned off because they've been through a recession. There's war at hand. Those sort of things continue to confuse a lot of people. So let's just focus on the charts for this video and we'll worry about those things in a, in a future video. January 2011 to 2012, it's a positive 12 months. So we'll just go through this nice and quick. 12 to 13, it's been a positive year as well. That's 12 months up. Uh, January to 2014, also another 12 months. Essentially, you could just buy in that January and then sell in 12 months time and it's been a profit. Now it comes a time where you couldn't have done that. Through the bear market, January 2014 to January 2015, it was down. Long period there, it was down. Then from January to January, slight positive here. So that's 2015 to 2016, 16 to 17, that's a positive. Into uh, 2017 to 18, positive. Again, this time couldn't happen, was 2018 into 2019. Big negative there was basically the entire bear market. Going forward after that 12 month bear market, 19 into 20, so 2019, 2020, positive. 2020, 2021, positive. 2021, 2022, still positive from the close to the close. But of course, the bear market started in 2022, or you'd probably call that November 2021. But essentially, the entire, entirety of 2022 has been down. So that brings us to today. We had a negative 12 months from January to January. Every single time in Bitcoin's history, over the last 13 odd years, we know Bitcoin has been around since 2009, data starting in 2010. The next 12 months after a bear market for Bitcoin, has shown a positive result for the price of Bitcoin. Meaning wherever Bitcoin is now, 12 months from now, we will probably, or at least the history shows 100% of the time, uh, the, the price will be higher than where it is now. Now, I'm not going to say that it has to happen because eventually these uh, rules that happen 100% of the time, eventually they stop happening 100% of the time. But what I'm going to show you next is why I think that we will probably see a higher price in the next 12 months from January based on where we are in the total cycle. But moving forward, I don't know if that will be the case. So I'm not going to tell you that something is 100% when the data may not, in fact, uh, be correct at 100% forever. So that's January to January. I also want to look at the quarters as well, when this next big test is. So we can basically call the shots here and say January to January, 12 months will be higher based on the data. Now, the major test, something that is going to be pretty difficult, I'd say, for the first quarter. Quarters are, of course, January, February, March, quarter one, quarter two, April, May, June, quarter three, July, August, September, and of course, quarter four, October, November, December, just in case you were wondering. Quarter one, it's going to be a tough time based on what we have seen in the past. So let's move this forward to March and April. And essentially, we'll leave it at April so we know that the previous month of that is March. There have been significant turning points for Bitcoin and the S&P in the first quarter. And all we have to do is just go back to the last few years. April and March of 2022, significant peak in the market. This was that first lower swing top. Very tough time. It's going to be a significant turn in the market. Going back again, April 2021 was the peak of the market. It basically, the bull market ran out in February. You can see the peak at 58K. And then 20, uh, April 2021 saw the absolute peak. Then we got the crash. So significant turns happened towards the end of quarter one. Of course, we can go back to March 2020. Very significant turn in the market. That was the pandemic low. And we also had that February peak before the pandemic low, which of course was an all-time high in the stock markets as well. Going back again, 2019, this was a significant move 
out of an accumulation period. So this broke the market out of accumulation. So there was a lot of energy in the market. What we're looking for here is a time where the news and the media is going to get extremely hyped up. March and uh, April of 2019, extreme time and ran into June. Uh, we also got a peak in February of 2018, or a, a major trough here after that peak. That held the market up for one, two, three, into that fourth month. So a very significant turn going back into that previous bear market. March of 2017, very significant timing in the market. This was just before it broke out into new all-time high territory in April. You can see it got a top and a bottom, basically breaking the previous month's high and low. So very significant time. 2016, not so significant, just before a breakout. We also got a turn in 2015, significant April bottom in 2014, running into a peak of June, very significant April peak in 2013. Obviously, that was the previous all-time high before several months underneath that. Uh, 2012, not as significant. Basically, it's the accumulation period. Very significant turn in 2011. And that's all the data we have here for Bitcoin. So quarter one, I suspect based on the data here and what we'll see in the S&P, is going to be a very significant turn, uh, test. So it's a very significant time in the market. That's what we're going to look out for in quarter one. Speaking of quarters, 2022 saw Bitcoin with four straight red quarters. The first time that has ever happened in its entire history. And this leads a lot of people to believe there's going to be further downside as well. But if we go back to the previous bear markets, 2018, it saw three red quarters and then a slight positive quarter three, only 3%. So it was almost four there as well. 2014 was also the last, uh, the bear market before that, and it had a very significant quarter two. So three in 2014, three in 2018, and we finally got our first four red quarters. But what happened after each of those quarters was a very significant bounce. You had a pretty big bounce in 2019, and in 2015, uh, it called the bottom and basically went sideways into that accumulation period through uh, 2015 before we saw that bounce out into 2016. So could that happen again? Obviously, it is very possible. It's shown that in the past, and that's what we're leading to into 2023. The other point here uh, is the average true range. So this is how much the, the volatility is in the Bitcoin price. And every time this gets quite low, you often see a big move, uh, a spike in the true range. So this is leading to a big move coming up very, very soon for BTC. It could be down, could be up. I know that doesn't help very much, but there is obviously going to be a very big move one way or the other. So keep an eye out for the support and resistance level. So it's not a, a big point to help us with, is it higher or lower? But there is going to be a big move because the range of the bars is contracting, meaning the volatility is dropping. And therefore, we always get a big move after the volatility contracts, which also works in with our uh, quarter one major test coming. There's going to be a significant move in quarter one. That could scare a lot of people out thinking we're going to see further downside. But as we'll show, you could potentially see some further upside. That's a wrap on my thoughts on Bitcoin throughout 2023 and potentially into 2024 and 2025. I did end up splitting this video up into two parts, which you'll see a link to on the side here popping up with the other playlists. And I've also left a link to it in the video description. The video got too long and I thought it'd be best if we leave one for Bitcoin and one for the traditional markets. So don't miss that one. That is going to be the leader in what happens across the entire globe when it comes to our finance, uh, financial markets throughout 2023. And of course, leading into what I believe is going to be a peak in land values sometime around mid this year decade. I don't think things are going to be as bad as what the media has been making out for 2023. And a lot of that data is in that video. So don't go anywhere. Like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the macro view here. Share it with a friend that believes the world is coming to an end in 2023 and see what their reactions are. Let me know in the comments down below whether you think Bitcoin is going to close higher or lower than what it opened in in 2023. And we'll come back and revisit this the end of 2023. Thanks again, guys. Check that video out popping up here or in the video description. See you at the next one. Until then, peace out.